Welcome back, everyone, to the Jake Take. I'm your host, Theo, who does not exist, Coyer. And today we have a special guest, Justin, from the Wish Pile. Creator of the Wish Pile. Hello. Hello Wish Pile? Creator? Yeah. Welcome on. Creator, yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you. It's, it's good to be here. All right. So... Let's just get into the into the thick of it. I have four questions that I'll be asking you. It's basically the four questions that I've asked everyone else. Um, okay. So if you saw Peter's interview that I released this Monday as of recording, you you should know what you're in for. If you have not, that I haven't been able to get that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So what brought you <laughs> into verses? Uh, what brought me into verses? My brother did because he sent me the uh, Marvel Battles box for Christmas one year, and it was something I kind of wanted to get. I was thinking about getting into like a collectible game, like Magic or something like that, because I just felt this like void in my life. And I had played the original Versus system a while ago, and uh, mostly I wanted to play with humans, and so I figured that. Uh, magic would was kind of the guarantee that I'd be, I'd be able to find people to play with but my brother picked up the battles box for me and uh i've managed to make some friends along the way awesome we're considered friends hooray <laughs> 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 all right um so the next why did you choose the character that you have chosen the character that you have chosen so i chose yeah, I I chose Doctor Voodoo mostly because uh, he's a, I think he's a pretty interesting character, but also I was trying to think of something that would win this contest, and uh, I chose him because it it seems like it he should be in these upcoming sets because he is a spellcaster and we've recently seen a bunch of spellcasters. And he also uh, hangs out with the Avengers and the Defenders. And, and I feel like he uh, could be a good fit for a Civil War Battles card set. But I also, you know, to win this he this contest, he can't ultimately be published. And so because he doesn't have a direct influence over Civil War in the comics, then I thought that that would make him... It, it would give me good odds that he wouldn't show up in these sets. Yeah. So that's why I, that's why I chose him. Honestly, I, uh, I thought about being like, you have to choose someone better. But then I was like, you know what? He should have been in the mystic side. So I was like, because of <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. I let him in. Cause like, seriously, how do you miss someone who took up being the Sorcerer Supreme? And miss him, and I think you put a Doctor <laughs> Druid. Yeah, everyone's everyone's favorite sorcerer, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I did do some research and looked into it. By that I mean Wikipedia. Um, uh huh. And it turned out around the time of Civil War, he registered. Okay. Like that's, okay. That's, so that's he the was on information the, we know yeah, about him is he's on Iron Man. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I figured which, he probably showed up somewhere. Yeah. So. Uh, so which leads me to question number three is, what would a card? What did you want this card to look like for him? So I don't have anything that's like super specific about it, but I did put a little thought into it, and I think that he should be a spellcaster. And if we want to do something that's a little bit twistier than the other spellcasters, instead of having him be like a certain specific um, power symbol spellcaster, so like energy or might spellcasting, uh, because he has voodoo magic, I thought we could create a new power type for him called voodoo spellcaster. And, um, and maybe he could do something... Because because he's Doctor Voodoo and he uses Voodoo magic, so we could do something with characters in the KO pile. So I don't know if if we remove a supporting character in your KO pile from the game, and then that allows him to cast certain spells instead of paying 
a power symbol instead. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Um, honestly, when you said uh, voodoo and dealing with stuff, I thought about possibly branching out and having him actually have the humanity symbol. Oh, yeah, interesting. That's actually um, a pretty good idea. Yeah. Humanity spellcaster? Yeah. And then... Well, yeah, I like uh, that. And actually, sort of playing off of your um, your previous statement, um, oh, so I'm just going to put down humanity in my notes real quick. <laughs> um, he had his brother Jericho Drum. Shoot, what is his brother's name? Is he Jericho? I believe brother? his name is Jericho Drum. Oh, he's yeah, his name is Jericho. Yeah. So what was his brother's name? I feel like I should know his brother's name. Da uh, Daniel Drum, maybe? Yes, Daniel Drum. That's right. There it is. As you say, okay. it, I finally get to it on the Wikipedia page. Uh, <laughs> his brother has always been like a specter. Um, so maybe uh, he could have like a token of that card that he could summon into by like removing a support character from the KO pile. Uh or or yeah. paying a humanity to bring him in. Yeah, I like that. Pay pay a humanity and then create uh I don't know if you would t take that character out of your KO pile and put it into play or if you would create a token character that maybe doesn't have powers or something you'd just use it for their stats. Which also reminds me I wonder that's what he did, right? Just refreshing myself a little bit on this because it's been a while since I've I've looked at uh, Doctor Voodoo and them. Yeah, I actually don't know yeah. all that much about him, other than the the was up in like recent Doctor Strange issues. He's he's more of a supporting character these days, but it'd be cool yeah. to see more of him. I'd like to get to know him better. He can command snakes too. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he knows um, what's that serpent tongue from Harry Potter? Oh, I have no idea. I am flaking on everything today. Uh, so command Slytherin. That that's the name of the house, but it's parcel parcel tongue. Okay, parsley. That tongue. sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, humanity, bring a token of... I'm just doing loose notes here. Yeah. All right. Um, his brother helped him amplify his power and allowed him to get into places that he couldn't before. So maybe when his brother comes into play he could grant his brother, like, a boon. Uh-huh. Um, like, maybe, like, uh, when Jericho or Daniel Drum enters play, put counters on Brother Voodoo or allow his brother to, to cast um, other spells, maybe? Something like that? Uh, yeah, that could be. That's... Trying to yes. look at what is what are the what is the theme of humanity powers? Uh, is there well, is there a theme? Not really. Uh, the humanity was brought in during like the aliens as an extra mm -hmm. resource. Um, because right. It was humanity versus, and technically the space resource is actually alien. Right. Um, a lot of the humanity theme powers seem to be a little all over the place. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was what I was looking at here. It could be something like um, team attacking, because like the mob mentality gives them team attackers, and and you know teaming up seems like something humanity would do. So if he like if he teamed up with his brother somehow, or if they team attacked and they could get like an extra bonus. 
Uh, if he can get uh, if he can get his brother into spaces he couldn't otherwise, then like maybe they could team attack with stealth. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, yeah that that actually might not be a bad, a bad. Or they could hide. Yeah, I also uh, what is that ghost ability? Intangible. Oh yeah, let's see. In, invisible and intangible. Yeah. Yeah. Invisible ghost doesn't protect characters and and can attack protected characters. Intangible ghost can't strike or be struck in melee combat. I feel like invisible might like, work. I I was feeling like those keywords might work with Jericho because I know uh -huh. or not Jericho Daniel. I'm gonna keep getting those guys confused. Uh, Daniel <laughs> Drum because. He's a, he's a specter. He couldn't actually do anything. Um, okay. But maybe like team uh, team attacking with his brother would allow him to actually, you know, participate. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I think that... Yeah. If he team attacks, he could he could. Act. So he's intangible, so he can't strike or be struck in melee combat. But if he team attacks, then maybe he can add his. Yeah. Attack his like, yeah. printed attack to Doctor Strange, or not Doctor Strange, but Doctor Voodoo. Yeah, I think that would be yeah. pretty solid. Yeah. Also brings team uh more teamwork in, which I feel like that uh, it's such a good mechanic that never gets used very often. <laughs> The te team attacking? Yeah. 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 Because I feel like it does in uh, in early play when you're just playing loyalty decks to get get to know the game. Yeah. But then as you kind of find which cards work with your deck, then team attacking becomes less and less. Although it is still very valuable at times. Yeah. Um. I actually think this. Civil War set's going to have a lot of really... I hope it has some really cool um, ways to sort of stick to loyalty. Because I think uh -huh. that'd be very fitting. Um, yeah. But okay, so so far what we have is uh, Brother Voodoo, Iron Man's team, for humanity, bring his brother into play. Uh, him and his brother can team attack together. But, uh, yeah... Which is cool because it, it's sort of reminiscent of Squirrel Girl and the Squirrel Tokens, but I'm assuming mm. Daniel Drum is going to be a little bit more powerful than a squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope so. What drop were you thinking for Brother Voodoo? Uh, I don't have any idea. I feel like he could come in anywhere, although if he has this team attack ability with his brother... Then I feel like a low to mid yeah, might be I, something. I was thinking about maybe like three or four. Uh huh. That seems good to me. We'll put it at three. And then, um, what did you want his stats to sort of look like? Let's see if he's on three. To find. They are <laughs> all over the place. Uh huh. Well, let's take a quick look and see what what three cost looks like. So Black Knight's a two four. Black Widow's a two four. Blind Spot's a four five. Yeah. Bullseye's a four four. I mean, at this point in the game, I would probably start him at four four, and then yeah, if he's a three, I'd start him at four four, and then. Uh, does he have flight and range? Uh, I, I was gonna have. say yes to the flight and range. Um, okay. Just because, yeah. I mean, he can he can fly and he does have range. Uh, yeah. he he can cast spells, so I think that that would be pretty reasonable. So then I might do like four three with flight and range. Four three with flight and range. Yeah, or maybe even four two because he's bringing he's bringing guys out, so he's kind of like getting free 
free drops. And so, you know, he's got to have some trade off. Uh, okay, 4 2. It's your card. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I would probably say one life. Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. Um, oh, we just what do you think? Life. I typed two life. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking there has to. I feel like we're missing something else. Like, we have the, the humanity spell, bring his brother into play. Him and his brother can can team attack, but uh, spellcasters had abilities when you played um, the... when you used spells of that type. Uh -huh. So, like, should we have another effect like that? Or... And if it's humanity, what do we do? Like, I'm looking at the uh, Pocket Versus app and seeing what the other spellcasters could do. So, like, the Ancient One, he has Martial Artist. Also, shout out and to the Pocket works. app, which is amazing. Yeah. I've, I've been using it constantly. Anytime someone has a rules question, it's just, like, so easy to pull up and get it on my phone. And, yeah, it's super nice. That's uh, pocketvs.web.app for those of you who haven't haven't tried it yet. Um, yeah, maybe maybe something with controlling snakes. I don't know. If there's some controlling snakes comes in, but <laughs> it's it's one of his powers. Yeah. So. Yeah. If we have something where he can, I don't know, what would snakes do? Poison? There's the uh, viper who does poison stuff. Oh, so hypnosis um, controls over lesser, greater control over animals. Plants will obey him for a limited time. Um Anytime. So we could give him, like, an intellect character-stealing power. Yeah, I was thinking something like uh, when a humanity spell is played, like, summon a, like, 1-1 one, one snake token. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, that, that seems like it could be fun. Yeah, I mean, how off? I mean, how many of these humanity t are there going to be? Also, what are they going to look like? I don't know. Yeah, we we don't. Even, we, this is all our game now. We're <laughs> we're going to decide what humanity spells look like. Actually, instead of it being um, uh, a snake token, because from what his power says, it can be uh, con uh, control over people, greatest control over animals. So we could just have it be a one one like animal token. Oh yeah. And then we could have something like when it comes into play, you could choose um uh when it enters play it could have a list of like effects that seem more animalistic. And you could choose one yeah, of those effects. Also, I was also thinking that we could do it so like Every time you cast a humanity spell, then you can summon like a a stronger creature, like a stronger animal. So like your first one, you'd get a one one. But if you cast another humanity spell, then you'd get a two two token. And if you cast a third one, you'd get a three three token. So it's he's like controlling like bigger and bigger animals. I like that, but that, like might, be, that might be a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Just trying to get wild on your podcast. Yeah. I like that because the flavor is kind of there. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we do have to figure out Daniel Drum. Because even though he's a token, he's got to have a cost. Okay. Because uh, uh, yeah. costs. I mean, we could just put it at, like, a zero. 
or uh, uh, yes. we could leave it. What are his stats gonna be? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> he probably will have flight, but no range. Okay. I don't. I don't think that he had any projectiles. I know he knew a bit uh -huh. of the mystic, uh, the mystic stuff, but I don't think. Yeah. So re remind me. So. Um... Dr. Voodoo summons him when he comes into play, or is it for a humanity? Uh, he pays a humanity to summon him. Okay. And we do have a four drop that does that, and she summons like four 1-1 one, one goblin tokens. Uh-huh. So, and we could also do it similar to the Doom Bot, where instead of inventing a doom bot then you would get a single daniel drum token so we could yeah. we could put him you know we could beat him up at like a four cost seven seven if we wanted to go that route uh, i think if anything he should be the same level as brother voodoo being able to a turn early get yeah. like a four drop out might be a little crazy. Fair enough. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because the doom bots go into your hand, so you still at least have to wait till turn four. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not saying that you'll have a humanity when he comes out, but if you do, going up curve and giving mm -hmm. Daniel Drum can only attack with Brother Voodoo, but that's like giving him a 7-7 seven, seven power boost to hit him yeah. on the board. Yeah, that's that's a lot. I mean, Brother Voodoo's going to be the one struck back because Daniel Drum can't... Well, oh, I guess because they're team attacking, his ability will make him able to get hit back. That might be too bad. Um, should we have Daniel Drum be sort of the opposite of Brother Voodoo? Be, have him be like a 2-4? Yeah, that sounds good. And I think, ironically, we should give him two life. No, only one life. No. Yeah, I think I think one. Yeah, one would be good. This guy has a lot going on. <laughs> So we got something together then? Yeah, I, I will work with that. And by the time this podcast comes out, I'll have everything hopefully fleshed out and worded more versus Lee and better. <laughs> <laughs> sure. All right. So then my final question. Uh, how does it feel to be a part of this weird contest? Uh, I mean, it's truly an honor. I... <laughs> And I, and I mean that sincerely. I feel like I've been in the Versus community for a long time, and um, you know, doing the wish pile got me in contact with a lot of people. And so it's fun having people, you know, even think of me when they when they decide to do something. So, so yeah, it's it's a uh, it's nice to be a part of this little friendly competition. I will say the wish pile was a ton of fun, and I look forward to the next time you do it. Yeah, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about it lately, so hopefully we'll have something something sooner or later. But there's definitely going to be a second one, for sure. All right. Well, I think that will be everything for uh, today's episode. Thank you for coming on, and everyone, thank you for listening. Yeah, I'll see you, in, see you next time. Yeah, until next time. <laughs>